So you have a small trading account and you don't have much time to trade. What's the solution? Well, scalping, based on price action and smart money concepts without using lagging indicators. The first scalping strategy involves trading supply and demand areas in combination with the pin bar inside bar combo. The pin bar inside bar is my go-to entry trigger. A pin bar is a candlestick that has a long wick and a small body. The longer the wick, the more powerful the rejection. The inside bar is a two candle formation with the second candle's entire range located inside the previous candle's range. So the high and low of the second candle must completely fit within the range of the previous candle. The inside bar is not technically a direct signal, it's what we call a consolidation phase. This is because during the entire period the candle was open, the market didn't make any real ground in terms of movement. The pin bar inside bar combo consists of a pin bar that is immediately followed by a small inside bar. With this price action sequence, you can capture potential tops and bottoms to price movements. You identify smart money traps that can lead to powerful price reversal moves and you position yourself into trending moves around supply and demand areas. This combination forms quite often, but that doesn't mean all pin bars followed by an inside bar are valid trading signals. In scalping, candlesticks have very little value if you don't see them in the right price action context, namely near a supply or demand zone. So when you see a pin bar forming at the supply or demand area, followed by an inside bar or even multiple inside bars, it's time to take notice because you might have a potential trade entry on your hands. You simply mark the area containing the pin bar and the inside bar and you trade the breakout of that area. If you backtest pin bars and inside bars and you take the trades at an area of supply or demand, you will notice they continuously produce consistent responses from the market. The odds are in your favor simply because you found the point of confluence in the market. I prefer supply and demand zones to the classic support and resistance levels because these are areas of market where there is a lot of liquidity at the particular price. These are basically accumulation and distribution zones where there have been huge volumes of orders. Here's a short trade on crude oil on the 5 minute time frame which involved taking a trade at this drop base drop supply area with the trigger being a pin bar followed by an inside bar. At this supply area, sellers outnumber buyers and push the price down. When price returned to it, first we had a pin bar indicating a rejection of that level, then the inside bar completely within the range of the previous candle was indicating a consolidation or indecision, confirming that the market was poised for a breakout. You place a sell stop order below the low of the pin bar, with a stop loss above the high of the pin bar or above the supply zone. And even though it's a scalping setup, you target the next major demand level, taking partial profits at the minor ones. Here's a buy trade on Apple on the 5 minute time frame. First, I identify this drop base rally demand area on the chart, which is a zone where price tends to bounce up from. We mark the zone and wait for price to come back to it. Then I looked for the trigger, confirming the direction of the trade. In this case, we want a bullish reversal pattern, a pin bar followed by an inside bar. The pin bar showed that price rejected the lower levels and the inside bar showed that price consolidated after the pin bar. These two candles together indicate that buyers may push price higher. So, a buy stop order above the high of the pin bar with a stop loss below the demand zone. The target is the next supply area on the chart or a risk to reward ratio of about 2. Another powerful scalping setup is a view of rejection with an engulfing pin bar formation as the trigger. I've talked about that in a previous video. The engulfing pin bar is a hybrid of two candlesticks. A candle which is an engulfing candle, but with a large wick. 
so the candle body must completely cover the previous candle body, signaling buying or selling pressure. And the candle must contain a wick. The wick shows the area of price that was rejected, and the implication is that price will continue to move in the opposite direction of the wick. The engulfing pin bar is one of the best triggers to scalp or day trade, just as momentum is picking up. These candles indicate a strong shift in direction, because they contain not one, but two signals in one candle. This pattern, in combination with the VWAP, will offer pretty decent scalping setups. First, consider VWAP as a trend indicator, depending on where the price is trading, above or below the VWAP line. Price trading above the VWAP, as the line rises, shows that buyers are in control, and trading below the VWAP, as the line declines, shows that sellers are in control. And if you find an engulfing pin bar forming near the VWAP line, you have a good chance to initiate a trade. In this example, we added the daily VWAP on the 1 minute time frame. Price is trading above the VWAP, testing the area, forming a small range. And here's the signal candle. First, the candle acts as an engulfing bar, signifying that the strength of bulls have overcome the strength of bears. We also have a wick below the bar, rejecting the VWAP line. You have two entry methods. You can enter right away after the candle was formed. Or you can place a buy stop at the high of the trigger candle. Stop loss is placed below the engulfing pin bar or below the view up. And you target double the amount you risked. Or you set the take profit at the previous market swing. We are analyzing Euro Yen on the 5 minute time frame. Notice that the price was trading above and below the view up line, which indicated a period of choppiness. Not the ideal market conditions to scalp. But look at this bullish engulfing pin bar formation at the view up line, breaking above the line. This shows that buyers have taken initiative and are pushing the price up. The very large wick is another sign of strength from buyers. We also have a decent wick on top of the candle, which shows increased volatility. It's a large spread candle, so the trade management must be on point. Being a large candle, I would place the stop loss below the view up and not below the candle. In this example, I noticed that price was approaching a strong demand area, where buyers had previously stepped in and pushed the price higher. Once price returned to the zone, a buy signal came in the form of a bullish engulfing pin bar. This candlestick indicates a possible reversal of the correction and a continuation of the bullish trend as the market is making higher highs and higher lows. The candle also rejected the view up line. This added more confluence to the trade as it showed that the price was undervalued and likely to rise. Not only we had the engulfing pin bar, we also had the demand zone and the view up line rejection. This is the strongest type of signal. Entry at the close of the trigger candle, with a stop loss below the low of the candle. Aim for a risk to your ratio of minimum 2 and try to take partial profits at the next supply areas to minimize your risk. Another price action scalping setup involves the inside bar liquidity clearout. Price initially breaks from an inside bar or consecutive inside bars, but then snaps back the other direction, creating a false break of the inside bar structure, a liquidity clearout. Smart Money ran the stop losses of small retail traders, removing them out of their positions and creating a vacuum for price to reverse back in the opposite direction. The inside bar liquidity clearout is a strong scalping signal that price may continue to move in the opposite direction of the false breakout. The easiest way to spot this pattern is to find the pin bar after an inside bar. So if you find this setup, you know that smart money are driving prices to a certain level where there are stop loss orders, and the goal is to create liquidity for their future trades. Once stop losses are hit, 
the market goes in their desired direction. When you spot a large candle and then several inside bars, be ready to witness a false breakout. In most cases, banks will try to trap retail traders. My advice is to trade the inside bar liquidity clearout in a trending market. So we are looking at pound dollar on the 5 minute time frame. The market was trending up, higher highs and higher lows. Buyers are in control, so the plan is to find the scalping buy trade ideally near a support level. In this case, you expect big players to hunt retail trader stops before pushing the market to go up. And here's the signal. First an inside bar, then a pin bar, taking stops below this small range. In this example, we have two inside bars within the mother bar structure. This is relatively common and sometimes you'll even see three or four inside bars before the false breakout occurs. You place a buy stop on the other side of the inside bar with a stop loss below the liquidity run or below the pin bar. With this setup, you take advantage of this manipulation instead of being trapped by the market. The key is to trade this setup in the direction of the most recent trend on the time frame you are monitoring. In this example, there's a small uptrend and we find the setup right here. Inside bar followed by a pin bar taking stops above the previous range. But this signal isn't something you should trade. If you short the market here, you are trading against the current momentum. You would have lost the trade. The point is, treat the setup as a continuation one and not a reversal one. This chart shows a valid example of the inside bar liquidity clearout, a sell signal with a pin bar in a downtrending market. Price is making lower lows and lower highs. We are trading right at the previous support level, potentially turning into resistance. Another important factor to consider. And the pin bar testing the level and hunting stops above the small range. This was a valid short trade. Sell stop below the low of the inside bar with a stop loss above the pin bar. A series of candlesticks with long wicks is something you should pay attention to because this can potentially indicate a change in trend. This is one of my favorite setups. The plan is to look for periods when momentum is fading away and the potential price change may happen. But first you must analyze the shape, size and the direction of the candlesticks. In an uptrend, the plan is to find corrections, pullbacks with candlesticks starting to become smaller and more evenly sized. This is the first sign that the uptrend is losing momentum. Then you look for consecutive candles with lower wicks during this period to reveal bullish pressure. In a downtrend, again, you look for pullbacks with candlesticks becoming smaller. A downtrend is losing momentum when you find consecutive candles with upper wicks revealing bearish pressure. So you're not looking for a single price bar with a large wick. If you don't have a decent location to trade it, one single candle might not be sufficiently reliable for an entry. This is why a group of candles with wicks is a much better way to filter false signals. So the plan is to find two or three consecutive bars with overlapping upper or lower wicks more, even better. Remember, wicks indicate potential buying or selling pressure. When these shadows overlap, they create a price zone that is more likely to display the buying or the selling pressure you anticipate. As usual, instead of scalping all over the place, the better setups usually happen at key price levels. Here's a bearish pressure zone. Observe the consecutive wicks indicating buyers are losing their strength. On its own, this area is not relevant, but it appeared at the supply zone where sellers started a strong downward wave. This is a decent setup. 
stop loss placement is obvious above the multiple wicks and you target the next demand zone or double the amount you've risked. Either way, take partial profits as the price goes in your favor. In this example, a possible trade on dollar yen on the 5 minute time frame. The setup involves entering a long position at a demand area right here, where the price has previously bounced up. The trigger for entering the trade is this area, with multiple consecutive candles having lower wicks, indicating that buyers are pushing the price up and rejecting lower prices. Stop loss is placed below the demand area, and the take profit is set at the next supply area. And I repeat, take partial profits when price hits a minor supply area. In our example, the final target isn't reached, but we have the chance to secure some profits when price hits this area. I can't stress enough the importance to take partial profits, especially when you are scalping or day trading. Okay, the price didn't hit the final target, but at least you took some profits and removed your risk by moving the stop to break even. We are looking at the 3-minute chart of Tesla. First, notice that the market had a gap up at the market open. This means that the opening price was higher than the previous close, a bullish pressure. I see this resistance here, which was broken to the upside, potentially turning into a support level. As the price is falling, look for signs of reversal. Notice that the candle started to have lower wicks, which means that the price was rejected at lower levels. This indicates that there is bullish pressure and that buyers are stepping in. I've also added the daily view up as an additional factor of confluence. A good buy trade was when price moved above the view up, as these consecutive candles with lower wicks rejected the line, with a stop loss below the lowest point of the wicks. Candlesticks with a very large body or spread are something special. I call them power candles. In volume spread analysis, a wide spread between the open and the close indicates strong market sentiment, either bullish or bearish, depending on the color of the candle. There are two main types of large candles, with and without wicks. When price action displays a solid candle with little or no wick at the top or the bottom, is suggesting strong and continued sentiment in the direction of the candle. So at the closing end of the candle, there shouldn't be any large wicks and the closing price must be located aggressively towards the closing direction of the candle. In the second case, the price action initially creates a solid candle, but then the sentiment starts to change and the candle finishes with a wick at the top or at the bottom. To qualify as a power candle, the spread of the candle must be larger than the surrounding candles. The candle must have a dominant presence on the chart that communicates a decisive move took place. The structure of these power candles is caused by a decisive and aggressive move in one clear direction. The price action of the widespread candle is sending a clear signal with one message. Sentiment for the candle is strong and the associated volume should therefore reflect this strong sentiment with strong volume. As we can see here, this power candle was formed with a high volume. This is what you should expect to see, volume to validate price. If the volume is below average or low, this is not a valid candle to trade. The price is being marked higher, but with little effort. A very high spread candle confirmed by the volume that appears during an uptrend for example and break some important resistance level might be a decent indication of the continuation of the trend. The higher the volume when the power candle is being formed, the stronger the signal is. If this candle is formed at a low trading volume, you skip the trade. Here we have a great trade on Tesla on the 3 minute time frame. We are looking for a short opportunity in a minor downtrend. 
I see this support level that was holding for a while. This also resembles a head and shoulders pattern with this support being the neckline. So the plan is to wait for a clear breakout of this level. The entry signal was a very high spread candlestick with a large body and high volume. Observe also that the volume increased during the recent price action. This shows that the sellers were in control and that momentum was strong. With power candles, the trade management is tricky. Depending on the range of the candle, you have to be flexible with the stop loss and the take profit. The entry is simple when the candle breaks below the support level because we also have the volume confirmation. The obvious stop loss location is above the high of the candle, but in some cases, this stop loss will not offer an appropriate risk to reward ratio because the take profit would be placed far away from the entry. A solution would be to wait for a retest of the breakout and then place a stop loss above this area. But be warned, in some cases, you won't have the chance for a retest. The power candle breaking an important level will lead price with even more momentum. Here's another setup, this time a very high spread candle on high volume breaking through resistance. The breakout candle was a big green candlestick, and in this case, no retest. And that's why I previously said that if you wait for a retest, you might not get the chance to enter. The retest will come, and there's another opportunity to enter, but it won't come right away. And here's why. As price continues to increase, sellers who shorted the market before the breakout are trapped. They wait for price to come back down to the previous resistance level, which will now act as a support to exit their trades in the hopes of limiting their losses. And look at the reaction at that level, when price returned to the breakout area three days later. Instant bounce from the level. This is another scalping opportunity. Short traders who were trapped finally closed their positions meaning more buy orders are released in the market and the price spiked up. So look for these retests after a power candle breakout. These are excellent trade opportunities. The tower top or tower bottom formation is probably one of the most underrated signals in trading, but you should try to incorporate them in your strategies because they are really effective. It's a reversal pattern. After an up move, you'll see one long bullish candlestick, followed by a few smaller candlesticks, marking a small range, a small period with a lack of momentum. One large bearish candlestick completes the pattern, indicating a slow change in momentum from bullish to bearish. Its bullish equivalent forms after a down wave or a downward momentum move. The first candlestick will be a long bearish candlestick. Several small body candles will follow, marking a small range. You'll often find small dojis or spinning bottom candles. And the last candlestick, completing the pattern, will be a big bullish candlestick, indicating a slow change in momentum from bearish to bullish. This is AMD on the 5 minute time frame. A large bullish candlestick makes a new recent high and is followed by several relatively small bodied candlesticks. Then a large bearish candlestick forms, a sign that a small range has ended and the potential down move may begin. As always, location will validate or invalidate the setup. It appeared at an obvious resistance level. We even had the liquidity clear out, trapping traders on the long side another reason to take the short trade. And here's the trick. The volume of the bearish candle must be higher than the previous two candles. This is very important and it tells you that sellers are gaining strength. If you don't have the volume confirmation, you simply skip the trade. The entry is right after the large bearish candlestick forms with a stop above the bearish candle. Here's another example. Here we have a big red candle, followed by another small one. 
and another low spread candle forming a pin bar. Then we have the big green candle showing the upward momentum. The signal is located at a clear level of support. We even have a liquidity clear out trapping sellers after this pin bar was formed. But we don't have the volume confirmation. The volume is lower than the previous candle. I would have skipped this trade, even though in hindsight I see that it continued to increase and would have allowed for a quick scalping trade. If you see the pattern and you also spot a liquidity clear out, the setup is even more powerful. As usual, first you must identify the tower top formation, which is right here, green candle, consolidation, and the aggressive red candle. But do you see anything special? Look at the red candle completing the setup. It's an engulfing pin bar. The candle body completely covers the previous candle's body, signaling selling pressure. And the candle contains a wick, showing another sign of selling pressure. We also have the liquidity clear out condition. This pattern takes the stop losses located above this swing high and at the same time traps new buyers above this level. And let's check the volume spread analysis condition. The volume of the bearish candle is higher than the previous two candles. In fact, it's the highest volume in the previous 10 or 12 candles. This is very important and tells you that sellers are taking control. Stop loss above the high of the candle and you target the next demand area. Now, if you want to scalp the market successfully, you must follow some rules. The first rule is that you should minimize the use of indicators. It may be tempting to start adding a couple of indicators to confirm a setup, but you should avoid doing this. As a scalper, you want to catch minor movements in a market, which means you need to make quick decisions. I prefer scalping based on price action and smart money concepts without using lagging indicators. But if you find a setup and you're not sure if it's worth taking or not, add your go-to indicator to see if it confirms your bias. But that's it, don't overdo it. Another tip is to avoid marrying a position. This is when you become emotionally attached to holding a trade, especially in the face of strong evidence that this is not the right position to be in. This will lead to excessive losses and wasted margin. This mistake goes hand in hand with another one, not using stop loss orders. It goes without saying, always use a stop loss when you are scalping and always respect it. Also, try to avoid over trading and revenge trading. This is when, after a series of losing trades, you try to compensate your losses by opening more and more positions, each one bigger in size than the previous one. If you lose 3 or 4 trades in a row, just stop scalping for that day. Also, given the number of trades a scalper makes in a single day, please lower the amount of margin dedicated to any single trade and always try to minimize your risk. I personally never risk more than 1% of my capital when I'm scalping. This will allow you to place multiple trades at a time without affecting your margin, even if you have a small trading account. By keeping your position small, you keep your scalping process under control, even if you record a few losses along the way. Also, scalping is not for everybody. You will need to be at your screen, staring at the lower charts, facing market noise. You need to be completely focused and to be able to react very quickly when you find a signal. Scalping is very fast paced, especially if you are trading the 1 minute time frame. If it's too quick for you, move to the 3 minute or even better to the 5 minute time frame. If it's still too fast, you can always go on a higher time frame and adapt these strategies for day trading and even swing trading, the principles remain the same. If you learned something new, please leave us a like and subscribe. And if you haven't watched our previous day trading course, you definitely must watch it. And check out our academy program 
if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.